What's the word, y'all? The Lakers just had a ridiculous, ridiculous fourth quarter comeback versus the Clippers, and I watched it last night. I'm gonna rewatch it again. That's how good of a fourth quarter it was. I need to rewatch it again. I've said this before. The Lakers are one of those teams, them and the Warriors, that it's hard for me to close the door completely on them because something like this could happen. I know that a play-in team, play-in team, I know. Starting off with a ridiculous Cam Reddish shot. That set the tempo for the entire quarter. That is a shot that he had no business taking. He had no business making, but he did. Like, fumbled the catch, and P.J. Tucker, yeah. Just saw a stat earlier today that P.J. hasn't scored in the NBA game since November. Now, it's not like he's played every single game, but that's still a very long time. A lot of this was this fella right here. Number 23, arguably the greatest to ever do a fly-by three-point shot for LeBron James. I think he scored in this game 19 points. I'm sorry, not in this game, this quarter 19 points, while the Clippers scored 16 as a team. So it was just a ridiculous takeover. Something that we don't get too often now in his old age. He's still been amazing, but like a full, full quarter takeover for LeBron has been phenomenal. Is that Jay-Z? Brother, brother, Jay is there? Okay, Jay-Z is at the game. Didn't even peep that. Didn't peep that. They probably showed him. I might I might have been in the bathroom when it happened. Quick stop. Uh, these hats, the Enjoy Enthusiast hats, the Basketball Enthusiast Enjoy hats are back on sale. The last time we sold them, they sold out in a matter of hours. That tells us to tell one of the restock, baby. So we restocked them. The link is in the description. EnjoyBball.com. Go copy one and let me know what, what you think. Uh, I've been wearing mine for about a year or so now. It's one of my favorite hats, man. So get in. PJ Tucker has been really upset with his playtime and, and I guess, lack of playtime. But, like, you're there to shoot corner threes. Shoot the ball. Shoot the ball. And what is the end in? A terrible shot attempt for the team. Like, that is one of the sole reasons you are on this roster. Now, granted, if they were completely healthy, he probably wouldn't be playing at all. But still, you have to make yourself a threat. LeBron is such a, a, a crazy player that you think the idea of going under on a screen like this makes sense. Obviously, P.J. decides to fight under because, again, LeBron is a tank. If he wants to get to the basket, he's just going to get to the basket. But right here, he goes completely, completely under. And though his recovery wasn't too bad... LeBron didn't need that much space or uh, doesn't need that much space to get that shot up and in. This is the point I'm pulling P.J. out the game. Now, this is not P.J. Tucker's fault. I don't want to make it seem like I'm blaming P.J. because LeBron just pulled up and hit a ridiculous shot, right? That's not P.J. Tucker's fault. But that is the moment of time I'm like, you know what, P.J.? <laughs> you know what, P.J.? This right here is really good anticipation by Norman Powell. Uh, they're sending the help for Terrence Mann with Mason Plumlee. LeBron just sees Mason Plumlee coming around. He say, hey, that's a bucket for Jackson. Jackson is telling him, throw it up. That's probably the better way. LeBron opts to not do that, but throw a bounce pass. And Norman Powell playing both gets in and causes that turnover. But they can't capitalize because Mason Plumlee thinks he's Jokic or something and gets picked from behind. And this ends in a three for D'Angelo Russell. Back to a single digit game. And this is like, a, as much as the offense is amazing, this is a defensive masterclass by the Lakers too. Every single pick and roll with James Harden, they bringing a the guy up. And that's right now, is Jackson Hayes, right? Because they say Mason Plumlee's not that much of a threat as a role man to us. Maybe he is, but to us, he's not. We'd rather just try to get the ball out of James's hands, which they have done a lot. Now, this right here, they're like, Mason, make a play. Torian Prince is playing both. Are you going to hit Norman Powell for a three, or do you see Terrence Mann cutting, and everybody sees Terrence Mann cutting, and the pass is lofty, and boom, turnover, Torian Prince with the steal. And well, this was a LeBron James fourth quarter takeover, so, of course, it ain't going to be just all three. Smaller defender, get to my spot, take the bump, create space, high off glass, and just like that, it's a five-point game. Another great defensive possession from the Lakers. Now, this ends in a Clippers basket off a loose ball, but I do want to highlight how good they defended in this fourth quarter. Again, as much as it was a LeBron James takeover, they also had to prevent the other team from scoring. And again, they scored on this, so Norman Powell hits a, a, a good shot. But look at this defense right here. Boom, they send two. Here's James Harden trying to get it to Mace. Then you see Braun pop in, but Kawhi Leonard said to recover. And then he finds the open man. And again, a good shot from Norman Powell. But Kawhi Leonard, right place, right time. Everything else the Lakers did was perfect. Like, you're not even mad at that if you're Darvin Ham because you played great defense. Even though LeBron was kind of upset by his body language. But it's all right. Because it's just three points and uh, he could get him right back, I guess. And he does. It's a bad man. Now he's 40 He's forty points away from 40,000. This is what I love. Kawhi Leonard and LeBron James guarding each other in the fourth quarters. Like, you know, I always say this. Just because two players are the best players in the team and they seem to play the same position, we, do, we don't really get those star versus star matchups that much. So we got some of it last night, and that's, that was amazing. And this possession... 
Kawhi Leonard end up getting the best of Braun. Like, that's a tough finish. It probably should have been an and one if you ask me. But Braun going right back at him. So it's, it was just a good matchup that I enjoyed. This is them trusting each other. Each other. Terrence Mann gets it. Now, you trust Terrence Mann to make the decision a lot more than Mason Plumlee. And you see the help from Austin Reeves. D'Angelo Russell, who's behind him, notices his teammates are here. He also notices Anthony Davis, one of the better rim protects of basketball, is there. Only three seconds to go. So he trusts his teammates to pick that up. And D'Angelo Russell goes corner to prevent that as an avenue. And it causes a tough-looking shot. And look at the old man. They, Kawhi. Deny. 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 That's off Kawhi's leg, too. Whoo-wee. Now, with four minutes to go, it's a 0-0 game. It's just outscore your opponent from here. Again, they were down by 20 not too long ago. Both teams are hunting matchups, right? Both teams are trying to get the worst defender on the ball handler. And that time for them, it's like getting D'Angelo Russell in as many actions. For the Lakers, it was getting Daniel Tice in as many actions as possible because they saw them as the weakest defender. Here it goes. There's Anthony Davis screen. And, and the one thing I can complain about a lot when it comes to this type of stuff is there are certain players in the NBA, like Kawhi Leonard, he did not fight through that whatever whatsoever. They as a team, or is it Kawhi, or is it Tyronn Lue, we're completely okay with Daniel Tice being the guy guarding LeBron down the stretch here because there was no resistance, right? The screen comes and Kawhi Leonard concedes and say, hey, all right, now I'm guarding Anthony Davis. Here's the screen. No fight. It's like, and that's just the scheme that they're running, which is, okay, if that's what it is, that's what it is. But if you're LeBron and you're the Lakers, you lick your lips at this matchup. There's the two. There's the flash. Rui misses this one, if I'm not mistaken. Offensive board. And I think he also, he gets it back, if I remember correctly. Playing in space, James Harden is playing help on that cut. Braun ends up finding him, and then Rui hits the second time around. Yep, that's how it played out. So, I just don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I always want to see my, my best defenders kind of fight through to try to prevent the switch, especially if we're talking Daniel Tice on LeBron James. Ball goes to Kawhi here 12 seconds ago. You see Norman Powell coming off the double. Austin Reese fights through here. There's no switch. There's no switch. Austin, you get back. And then Austin for five seconds said, hey, this is my time to shine. Norm, I don't care what you're doing. You're not even going to get a shot up, baby. Here we go again. There's a screen from Anthony. And it's just what it is. Now it's Braun versus Tice. There's a flash again from D'Angelo Russell. And Rui ends up finishing the play, too. So it's, it's happening over and over. It's a switch. There's a flash to the middle of the paint. D'Angelo Russell, a good uh, creator slash decision maker. And he made the right decision back to back possession. And this right here is my favorite moment of the game. I, I'm a sucker for a no dip three. D'Angelo Russell is becoming one of the better no dip three point shooters in all of basketball. It is the thing that I enjoy the most currently in basketball. A no dip three. And this is not just any ordinary no dip three. This is a huge three to put them up by six points with a minute to go. Let's, let's see it one more time. I, if you don't know what a no dip three is, it's just like no matter where you catch it, that's where you release it. Usually a person brings it down to their core. You do their jump shot routine. D'Angelo Russell has hit a lot of these this season. And a lot of them end up being in these clutch scenarios. So shout out to D'Angelo, man. Because uh, that trade market stuff could have got to him and it didn't. And I saw a lot of conversations about what happened at the, at the timeout. Down by two. The Clippers with ball nine seconds ago. Kawhi Leonard goes immediately. I'm not mad at that shot. It, it missed. Um, I thought Braun played good defense for sure, but that is a shot we've seen Kawhi Leonard make a hundred times. Like, there's there's nothing too crazy about the shot. It's get, get him with a head full of steam going towards the basket. He gets that. There's opposition there. He fades a little bit, but that fading is a shot that we've seen him make multiple times in this game alone. So, I don't hate the last shot, um, but they lost. And that, that, was the, that was the comeback for the LA Lakers, man. That was the comeback for the LA Lakers all in one period. If you enjoyed the video, leave it a like, uh, and that will go a very long way.